Welcome to the Shika Serbu Motor Channel. This channel provides easy to understand explanations of car mechanisms. The topic of this video is Power Steering Systems. There are two types of power steering for passenger cars hydraulic and electric. Currently, electric power steering is commonly used. This video showcases manual steering, hydraulic power steering electric power steering, and steer by wire. There are no modern passenger cars that adopt steering systems without power assistance. However, the mechanism for turning the direction of the road wheels is the same, regardless of power assisted or not. So, let's first take a look at the structure and operation of a manual steering system. When the driver operates the steering wheel, the rotation of the steering wheel is transmitted to the steering pinion, which is then converted into horizontal movement of the steering rack. On the both left and right ends of the steering rack, tie rods are attached. The tie rods transmit motion to the suspension knuckle through the ball joints at their ends, thus turning the direction of the road wheels. This type of steering gearbox is referred to as a rack and pinion system. In buses and trucks, a recirculating ball and nut type steering gear box is used. It has advantages such as minimal kickback from the road and light steering effort, but it has the disadvantage of a low steering gear ratio. In passenger cars, this system was utilized until the 1990s by some manufacturers such as Mercedes Benz and BMW. However, nowadays, it is exclusively employed in off road 4WD vehicles. Hydraulic power assist systems are employed in both recirculating ball and nut, and rack and pinion steering systems. This video focuses on the rack and pinion power steering system. The hydraulic power steering system consists of, a power steering pump, a spool valve, and a power cylinder. The power steering pump is rotated by the crankshaft through a belt, and pumps the power steering fluid. The spool valve is connected to the steering wheel, and with the rotation of the steering wheel, switches the hydraulic pathways for the power steering fluid. Hydraulic pressure is applied to the power piston within the power cylinder, causing the power piston to move the steering rack, and thereby altering the direction of the road wheels. Let's take a closer look at the structure of the spool valve, and action of the hydraulic pressure. The steering wheel is connected to the spool valve through the steering shaft. The spool valve is fixed to the steering pinion. The sleeve on the outer side of the spool valve has the inlet and the outlet ports that connect the power steering pump and the power cylinder. The spool valve is equipped with grooves. As the spool valve rotates, these grooves open or close the inlet and outlet ports on the sleeve. A torsion bar passes through the interior of the spool valve. The torsion bar is a rod-shaped spring. When one end is fixed, applying rotational force to the opposite end causes it to twist. When the driver operates the steering wheel, the resistance from the tires causes only slight movement of the steering pinion and spool valve, leading to torsion in the torsion bar. A phase shift occurs between the spool valve and the sleeve, causing inlet port and outlet port of the sleeve are connected. A fluid passway is established between the power steering pump and the power cylinder, causing the power piston and steering rack to be pushed by hydraulic pressure. As the steering rack moves, the pinion and spool valve are rotated. When the ports of the sleeve are closed by the rotation of the spool valve, the power assist action is completed. The hydraulic power steering system has two major disadvantages. The first one is, the contradiction between power steering pump output and vehicle speed. If you have ever driven a car with manual steering, you may know that the steering wheel effort is significantly higher at vehicle low speeds, such as during parking, and decreases as the vehicle speed increases. However, the output of the power steering pump is at its minimum during engine idling speed, and increases with the rise in engine speed. For this reason, a system designed to generate sufficient assistance force at low vehicle speed will produce excessive assistance force at high vehicle speed. To address this issue, speed-sensitive power steering has been introduced. At low vehicle speed, the power steering control unit closes the hydraulic control valve, supplying all generated hydraulic pressure to the power cylinder. 
As the vehicle speed increases, the power steering control unit opens the hydraulic control valve in accordance with the vehicle speed, returning a portion of the hydraulic pressure to the reservoir tank. This system prevents excessive assistance force at high vehicle speed. However, it discards the generated hydraulic pressure leads to a decrease in fuel efficiency. The second disadvantage is related to problems during straight driving. Even when the car is running straight and the power steering is not worked, the power steering pump continues to generate hydraulic pressure. This results in a decrease in fuel efficiency. To prevent this, some models of cars adopt an electric-driven hydraulic pump instead of engine-driven hydraulic pump. The pump operates only when hydraulic pressure is required. Electric power steering detects the driver's steering input through a steering torque sensor. And the power steering control unit calculates the optimal assist force, taking into account vehicle speed information. The steering motor is then rotated accordingly. It was first introduced in the Honda NSX, released in 1990. The system can be classified into four types, based on its position of the steering motor and drive system. In the column type, the steering motor is positioned near the steering wheel, and it drives the steering shaft. This type is commonly used in compact cars, that have insufficient space to place the steering motor in the engine compartment. Because the motor is located inside the vehicle, the motor is not required waterproofing performance. For the motor to apply significant torque, sufficient rigidity in the steering shaft or shaft support components is necessary. Therefore, this type is suitable for lightweight compact cars. In the pinion type, the steering motor drives the steering pinion shaft. This type allows for the application of significant torque, making it suitable for vehicles with substantial weight. The dual pinion type incorporates an additional pinion to drive the steering rack. Due to the high design flexibility and motor placement, it allows for the adoption of large and high power motors. In the rack direct type, a steering motor is positioned coaxially with the steering rack to drive the rack directly. It adopts a recirculating ball and nut type gear, enabling smooth operation. The system detects the driver's steering input through a torque sensor. There are several types of torque sensors. This video focuses on a ring type torque sensor. A ring type sensor is equipped with a rotor made of a magnetic material. A slotted sleeve is located on the outer side of the rotor. On the outer side of the sleeve, detection coils are installed to capture changes in magnetic flux caused by the rotation of the rotor. A torsion bar passes through the interior of the rotor. Similar to the spool valve of a hydraulic power steering system, it detects the driver's steering wheel input force based on the phase difference between the steering wheel and the rotor. In recent years, automobiles have become heavier, while the electrical system remains at 12 volts. With the 12 volt electrical system, there may be insufficient power during low speed steering operations that require significant torque, leading to inadequate motor output. In the future, the widespread adoption of electric brakes and mild hybrid systems raises concerns about further shortages of electrical power. For these reasons, it is anticipated that the adoption of 48 volts electrical systems will continue to progress. A steer-by-wire system is a system that electronically controls steering operations without mechanically connecting the steering wheel and steering rack. The driver's steering wheel inputs are detected by the steering sensor. Unlike the torque sensor in electric power steering, this system senses the angle and angular velocity of the steering wheel. The steering control unit calculates the optimal steering operation based on signals from the steering sensor and other factors such as vehicle speed, and then drives the steering motor. Since the steering wheel is not mechanically connected to the tires, it is possible to isolate kickbacks and vibrations from the road surface. However, drivers sense the road conditions and tire grip through the reaction force and vibrations in the steering wheel. So, steer-by-wire systems incorporate a reaction motor to artificially generate reaction force and vibrations. In the future, with the realization of Level 5 fully autonomous driving, this system is likely to become essential. However, that is a discussion for the distant future. Thank you for watching. 
If you enjoyed this video, please consider subscribing to our channel. We'll see you in the next video.